We start out with basically how the typical trials motorcycle electrical system works. You have a magneto stator and it has lighting coils that generate AC voltage. They're usually called lighting coils because you know you can run lights. And then typically you have some kind of a voltage regulator that kind of takes away excess voltage when you rev the engine up. But on most brands, typically the power AC wire that's making the AC power is yellow. And it wanders around. This would be going over to lights. And then you have, like in this case, a light blue, dark blue wire coming up that go, this is the CDI which controls the ignition curve this little pigtail happens to be for the kill button. And then you've got the coil that, that sends the spark voltage to fire the spark plug. Then you have a rectifier, which you can think of this kind of as like a little slot car set or a toy train. It's taking that AC voltage alternating current and making it DC direct current. And so the AC goes in and then DC comes out and it goes into the cooling fan which is a DC motor. Here you can see here's the rectifier and then the wires go into the fan motor. So that being said I'm going to leave that part of this conversation and we'll go over here to how these cooling fans work. You always have some kind of a thermostat in the system. In this one it's in the bottom of the radiator. In this one it clips in the radiator with a circlip right there. This is a gas gas. This is a TRS. What happens is you have typically AC goes through AC coming in into that thermostat and that thermostat is open then when it gets to a specific temperature that thermostat closes and how that works typically there's a little piece of metal in there that bends when it's affected by heat and it closes the circuit so then AC comes back out the other wire and goes over here into the rectifier which converts it to DC which then the fan runs so a simple circuit AC in AC out to DC conversion into fan motor and fan motor runs. When the thermostat cools down, that little piece of metal in there retracts and opens the circuit so no longer is there a connection here. So if your thermostat goes bad, you know, some people, they'll just jump the two wires to make the fan run all the time. And you can do that, but it's hard on the fan motor and it's also not going to give you a consistent operating temperature of your engine. It'll take a lot longer for the engine to warm up. So the different rectifiers over the years and the different brands, they vary. Evolution of the thermostats. When we started out in the 90s, liquid-cooled bikes, it was an automobile type one, see here. And it screwed into the cylinder head and it was actually directly in the water of the cooling system. So this was in the water. On the gas gas, the next evolution was this, this microchip like thing. I think it still has a piece of metal in there. The fault with this was that it's not in the water stream. It's just a little place in the casting here for it to sit. You put a little silicone sealant and then that thing went in there. The problem with this design, which was 1993 late and early 94, was that it took a long time for the heat to penetrate this metal, penetrate this casting here, penetrate that silicone, heat up this piece and complete the circuit to make the fan run. So you'd have the bike getting very hot initially when you first run it as it took a while for the heat to get through these metal parts. So this, this type didn't live very long in design. Then came the inline thermostat in a housing 
like this and these were kind of expensive actually this piece the thermostat and what I particularly didn't like about it was it was really kind of hokey the way it went together it just pressed into a rubber grommet in there and it wasn't screwed in or really held in by anything and it could pop off and come loose beside being expensive I believe Sherco also used that and then came the ones that are in the radiators. Um, that's the way most bikes are now. They're, they screw into a threaded area in the radiator typically. And there was a period, mid 2000s, late 2000s, when Gas Gas used this one that plugs in, has an O ring on it, and it held in with a snap ring. For all these thermostats, I have a universal replacement looks like this and it actually does screw down into the water stream and it replaces this one and if you had a bad thermostat in the radiator and you wanted to switch to this you just leave that one in there snip off the wires or whatever and like always you just have a power wire in and a return wire out that when this heats up and, and closes the circuit it just completes the circuit and the fan runs it's really simple how these work so this one will make any trials bike fan circuit work it goes in the water hose somewhere and pretty much everybody uses the same hose diameters that this will plug into so why Am I selling this? This, I sell it because it, it's a universal fix it no matter what it is and make the fan work part. But also, I like the fact that it's brass. It screws in there in the water stream. It's obviously very well made. Some of the thermostats have been problematic. Some of them have been expensive. So that's the overview of the cooling system fan, how it gets AC voltage through a rectifier, fan runs. Fan is turned off and on by the thermostat, which completes the circuit or opens the circuit and turns off the fan. Now, finally, the curiosity about these thermostats is that they turn on at a specific temperature, but they actually turn off at a lower temperature than they turn on at. Why is that? Well, it's because if it didn't do that, the fan would just be turning off on, off on, off on, off on constantly because this switch would be tripping and, and releasing at exactly the same temperature. So when it gets up to a point, it turns on and that fan will run until it gets down below that turn on point a few degrees and then the fan turns off and then that lets the engine come back up to temperature again and then the fan turns on and runs for a little while so this is just keeping that fan from just constantly turning off and on I mean it would just turn off and on every few seconds if the thermostats weren't designed like that and that's it on, on this little video. No specific tutorial, just an explanation. It is the third day of July 2019. This is Jim Snell. Thank you for watching.